What is a drug? Considering the ease with which we speak of drug use, it seems that it should be relatively easy to explain what we mean by the word drug. Unfortunately, there are significant problems in arriving at a clear definition. The standard approach is to characterize a drug as a chemical substance that, when taken into the body, alters the structure or functioning of the body in some way. In doing so, we are accounting for examples, such as medications used for the treatment of physical disorders and mental illnesses, as well as for alcohol, nicotine, and the typical street drugs. Unfortunately, however, this broad typical definition could also refer to ordinary food and water. Because it does not make much sense for nutrients to be considered drugs, we may need to refine our definition by adding the phrase excluding those nutrients considered to be related to normal functioning. But we may still be on slippery ground. We can now effectively eliminate the cheese in your next pizza from being considered a drug. But what about some exotic ingredient in the sauce? This definition means that sugar is safely excluded, even though it has significant energizing and therefore behavioral effects on us. However, there is increasing evidence that the same pleasure and reward brain systems that are hijacked by drugs of abuse can be hijacked by foods, and there is a growing appreciation for a new field of addiction, namely food addiction. And what about the cayenne pepper that burns your tongue? Where do we draw the line between a drug and a non-drug? It's not an easy question to answer. We can learn two major lessons from this seemingly simple task of defining a drug. First, there is probably no perfect definition that would distinguish drugs from non-drugs without leaving a number of cases that fall within some kind of gray area. The best we can do is to set up a definition, as we have, that handles most of the substances we encounter. However, significant practical difficulties may arise. As we will see in year two, the fact that dietary supplements are currently not regulated in the United States has resulted from a governmental decision that these particular substances are not to be considered drugs in the same category as prescription or non-prescription over-the-counter medications. The second lesson is more subtle. We often draw the distinction between drugs and non-drugs, not in terms of their physical characteristics, but rather in terms of whether the substance in question has been intended to be used primarily as a way of inducing a bodily or psychological change. By this reasoning, if the pizza maker intended to put that spice in the pizza to make it taste better, the spice might not be considered a drug. It would simply be another ingredient in the recipe. If the pizza maker intended the spice to intoxicate you or quicken your heart rate, then it might be considered a drug. Ultimately, the problem is that we are trying to reach a consensus on a definition that fits our intuitive sense of what constitutes a drug. We may find it difficult to define pornography, but, as has been said in the halls of the U.S. Supreme Court, we know it when we see it. So it may be with drugs. Whether we realize it or not, when we discuss the topic of drugs, we are operating within a context of social and cultural values, a group of shared feelings about what kind of behavior, that is, what kind of drug-taking behavior, is right and what kind is wrong. Judgments we make about drug-taking behavior even influence the terminology we use when referring to that behavior. When we say drug misuse and drug abuse, for example, we are implying that something wrong is happening, that a drug is producing some harm to physical health or psychological well-being of the drug user or to society in general. But what criteria do we use to decide whether a drug is being misused or abused? We cannot judge on the basis of whether the drug is legal or illegal since the legality of a psychoactive drug often depends more on historical and cultural circumstances than on its chemical properties. Tobacco, for example, has, been root has deeply rooted associations in American history, 
dating to the earliest colonial days. Although it is objectionable to many individuals and harmful to the health of the smoker and others, tobacco is nonetheless legally available to adults. Alcohol is another substance that is legal even within the bounds of the law, even though it can be harmful to individuals who become inebriated and to others who may be affected by the drinker's drunken behavior. The difficulty of using a criterion based on legality is further complicated by cultural differences in communities around the world. In the end, it is difficult to define precisely what a drug is. For our purposes, we will stick to excluding those nutrients considered to be related to normal functioning. However, we will explore those substances intended to induce psychological change in year two.